In this video covering the physical exam of the cat, we will go over how to do a basic home health check. Observing your pet yourself allows you to pick up problems early and bring them to the attention of your veterinarian. It's become more important than ever to have an eye on your health as well as your pet's health. The healthcare system is overwhelmed and this includes veterinary offices. Due to delays in getting your pet seen, it's important to detect issues with your pet early before they become even bigger problems. Early intervention will always lead to a better outcome. Most people bring their pet in for an annual exam, but if you think about it, one year in a pet's life is more like seven years. So checking in regularly is even more important, especially with seniors. That would be cats over about six years of age. Senior pets should be seen by a veterinarian about every six months. Follow along at home with the cheat sheet linked below. It has some useful information and vital sign information that you can record and make notes that you can save and bring to your veterinarian at your next visit. We will go over my cat Phoenix when we get back. Okay, so you're gonna want to go ahead and print out the little um, exam home health check so that you can walk through it. I'll walk through it with you. You can make little notes as you go. And this is Phoenix. We call him our little domestic Diablo cat. 90% of the time he's very sweet, but he can be a little spicy. So we'll see how he does today. Um, I do have sometimes a little spatula that comes in handy to lift the lip up and look. Um, if your cat uh, or pet and, and also um, is not cooperating. A little towel, you can make a little burrito out of your kitty and um, take a little look at things. So, um, you know, obviously I'm a veterinarian, so I'm used to, you know, handling animals. I think the average cat, if you start poking and prodding, is not going to be thrilled with it. So, uh, maybe have somebody help you, or if you think that your pet is um, going to be difficult, then maybe leave that job to the vet. But I think it is good to be able to just do some of these things the best you can, or just start to, to look at things and handle things a little bit so your pet isn't like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, do what you can. Um, you don't have to go through the whole list do, do as you go, you know, so we revisit that later on and maybe just do that one thing next time. So. Anyway, so get your little cheat sheet out there or your little um, uh, checklist. And we're gonna basically um, look at our little pet here, Phoenix, and look at the general appearance. Um, you know, are they alert and engaged? Um, actually, there's a rabbit in this room, so Phoenix has never seen a rabbit, so he's very alert and very engaged in what is on the floor there, those little bunnies running around. So um, obviously, um, is their stance comfortable? Um, are they crouched or, you know, not standing properly? How is their body condition when you feel over their back? Do you feel their spinous processes, the little, little bumps, or do you feel muscle? Um, is there, can you feel the rib cage easily? Do they have an abdominal tuck and a little bit of a waist from above? You don't wanna be able to feel the bones, but you also don't wanna have a, a heavy layer of fat either. And if you can weigh your pet, that's really helpful. Obviously you can hold your pet and then you know subtract your weight and, and keep a, a track of their weight. Obviously for a cat, a baby scale would be ideal, but most people don't have that, but you know, you would pick up an, a pound or two weight loss, which obviously would be alarming, but um, it'll just kind of help you keep track of trends. The other thing we're gonna look at here, um, I'm gonna show you how to make a burrito because he is very um, much <laughs> not wanting really to cooperate with me. So since I'm doing this myself, um, you just basically wrap the towel. You've never been made into a burrito before, so. And then you just, this, you know, is gentle under their neck. So, and then because the, the claws are underneath, you can kind of um, wrap the whole thing up here. And obviously if someone's helping you out, they can, um, you know, put their hands around the burrito and you can lift back the gum and look at the teeth. And you can see um, his gums look nice and healthy. They're not red. 
Um, when cats have gingivitis, what you'll see is a, a line of red along the teeth, but you can see his teeth are very healthy. Um, and he doesn't have anything going on there to worry about. Um, to open up his mouth, you can kind of just lift gently and the, the jaw will drop and then you can kind of do that or with your handy dandy spatula, um, if you have someone helping you, um, you can, you know, obviously look with, look that way. So that's the mouth. Look at the eyes, look at the white of the eye and you can see here that, um, you know, it's not off color, it's a, it's, a, it's a white color. You know, you wanna make sure that there's not too much, you know, blood vessels injected into there looking angry and that the, the cornea looks nice and clear and um, all is well there, that there, the eye is not cloudy, obviously, or red. Um, you wanna look inside the ear and kind of look down and smell, um, see if there's any odor coming. Everything looks good there. So we made it through uh, the eyes and the mouth and the nose that it, it just looks like there's no discharge. Um, you know, the whole thing with the dry nose, wet nose. I mean, the most important thing is that it's not cracked and dry and that there's no discharge. And then, um, oh, I forgot to mention, there's something called capillary refill time. That's, um, you know, where you wanna look at the gum and you wanna touch it and it should pink up quickly. Now he doesn't like that. That's something I wouldn't expect you to really be able to do very easily on a cat, but um, it, it basically, you just wanna be, you know, aware of what your pet's gum color it looks like so that when they're sick and you lift the lip, you'll say, oh, that looks a little pale or maybe a little darker than usual. Um, but, you know, just be familiar with the, what the regular color is. And then lymph nodes. So the major lymph nodes that you can feel, um, like right where the angle of your jaw is, the same thing in your cat, the angle of the jaw, you know, where your, your mandible kind of goes up here, right there, underneath there, where you, we have lymph nodes. They also have lymph nodes there. You know, you shouldn't really feel them. They're pretty small. His are... Gosh, they almost feel like little lentils. They're very, very small. So um, you just wanna know what that feels like. So when they're large, you recognize it. So that's the angle of the jaw. And then um, another major one is right in front of the shoulder. So you wanna kinda, kinda a little crab claw here around the corner and the shoulder in front there, if there's any swelling in that area. And then he's not gonna love this, I know it, but there's one at the crook of the knee back here, right behind right behind the kneecap in us on, on the cat. So his kneecap is in the front of his knee, right behind it here. That's where the, the lymph node would be. And again, I can barely feel it. It's just when they're large, that's when you feel them. So we checked out the lymph nodes and then heart rate. So if you don't have a stethoscope, obviously, what you can do is just feel kind of, maybe you wanna feel against the rib cage there. So I'm just basically like kind of like the point of his elbow. I'm just kind of with a flat hand, just touching up against him. Let's see if I can feel it. and I can feel his heart beating there. And basically what you would do is count for 15 seconds and multiply by four. Or if your cat is really wily and moving around a lot, you can count for six seconds and count and multiply by 10. So again, that might not be something that you're gonna be out of the chute able to do, but sometime just you know putting your palm up against them, you might be able to feel the heart rate. And then respiratory rate, um, just at rest. Okay, he's getting a little annoyed at this point. You just want to look at the general, the rise and fall of the chest. And um, basically when they're hanging out, record that as well. Um, I have the normals there. And temperature, um, you want to have a plastic thermometer at home. Um, that is obviously safer to take the temperature with that. 
um, have a little Vaseline on hand to lubricate the end, and then you wanna stick it in about, oh, a quarter of an inch or so. And then again, that's something that you're never gonna be able to do by yourself. Um, I mean, uh, you're gonna wanna have somebody help you do that. And again, that's another thing where, you know, I think the, one of the most common ways that veterinary staff get injured is when they're trying to take a temperature. So um, unless you really have good reason to do that, I would not. Um, unless your pet is super cooperative. And then the last thing you want to do is just a body scan, basically just um, stroke um, over the, the whole body and down the extremities and see if you feel any lumps anywhere. And then we're getting to the end of our tolerance here. And okay, fee. Um, you want to kind of feel down the mammary chain, especially in females. Then lastly, I know we're not going to get this. You're turning into the Diablo cat. He just gave me that look. But um, you want to take a look at their anal area and just make sure that there's not um, anything, uh, any growth there or any irritation. But um, I'm fairly certain if I do that, he's going to bite me. And... <laughs> I don't think that information is very valuable right now. But, you know, just to keep it in mind that you want to check out the whole cat. There you go. Phoenix, thank you so much for being a good patient. So Phoenix says subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can find out when we release another video.